Hello and welcome to Bow Beats. So in this video we're going to take a look at the circuit editor. But first we need to have... The sip of the coffee. So in this first video we're just going to get ourselves acquainted with the editor because it can be quite daunting opening it up and seeing all those parameters in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through every part and we'll talk a little bit about what it does. Now remember this video is for beginners and you should know I'm not very technically oriented so I will talk perhaps a bit more from, from what I hear rather than the exact technical specifications of something. But I think it will be interesting. I mean, most tutorials out there are very technical. So perhaps you'll find this one helpful. So let's get into it. So as you can see, we've opened up the editor here on my MacBook Air. I also have the Novation circuit connected via USB and I'm in a blank session. It doesn't really matter where you are in the circuit. You don't really have to think about the circuit until you want to save a patch. So don't worry too much about those things right now. The first thing you want to do is check that the circuit is connected. You can do that by seeing this teal color up here, I think it's called teal anyway. Um, you can also use the view control over here to change the size of this little editor. Let's think about the editor as in different layers. The first layer you have up here, the top layer, is sort of the control of the patches. Saving them, loading them, naming them and so on. Down here you have the macro controls and further down you have the synth engine controls and here you have the mod matrix. Another important part is the voice controls down here but we'll, we'll get to that. So say you want to make a sound, where do you start out? Well, you start out with initializing the current patch. It doesn't really matter which patch you initialize. It could be any one of the patches that you have on the circuit. So by clicking initialize current patch, you get something like this. All right, so where do you want to start out? Well, I think that the first thing you have to know is the oscillators. Oscillators generate sound and you have two of them down here, oscillator one and oscillator two. Let's just begin with one oscillator. You have to check so that the oscillator is turned on in the mixer. This is the mixer section down here. The mixer section mixes different sources of the synth. So the oscillator creates sound and the mixer section mixes those sounds together. So let's start off with one oscillator, one sound generating source. And we can start by changing the waveform And suddenly we have a quite different sound. Now if we want to bring in the second oscillator for a fatter sound, we just press oscillator 2 and bring it up here in the mixer section. We can also under oscillator 2 change the waveform. So as you can see in the mixer section, we have oscillator one and two on different levels, and you can experiment with different levels to see what happens. Now, over on the mixer side here, we have ring modulation, noise level, pre-effects or post-effects levels. You can just experiment with those and see what they, they do. It's, it's pretty easy to hear what they do. The oscillators are where you start out, using different waveforms, and, and turning them up in the mixer section makes you hear what's going on. Then you have the envelope. And if we start with the amp envelope, it's sort of the traditional uh, thing you use when you want to change something from a fast attacking sound to something with a slower attacking sound, like a pad. So for example, now it's, it's a short attack. And if we turn the attack up, it will be more paddish. We can also increase your release to give it a more of a pad sound. 
So if you're a beginner, I would just start out using the amp envelope and see how it shapes the sound. And you can get into filter and envelope three later. Next we have the filter section. And here's where you can really shape the sound a little bit more. You do it by addressing frequency as well as resonance. Those are sort of the two very specific parameters you should think about. So on an initialized patch, the frequency will be at 127. If we turn it down, you will hear what happens. And if we turn the resonance up, You should also try out using the drive function because that really adds something to, to the sound. And change the drive type as well. And filter type as well. So let's backtrack. We've gone over how the oscillators send sounds to the mixer. You can turn up the mixer volumes for oscillator one and two. You can, in oscillator one and two, change the waveforms, which really changes the characteristics of the sound. Then it goes into the envelope, and if you use the amp envelope, it's sort of normal how fast the attack is, how, how long the sound is, wah or wah. And then it goes into the filter and you can tweak it there. So this is not exactly technically how, how the chain is, but it's, it's a way of thinking about the sound. So stay with me. We could go back to the oscillators here and for example, detune oscillator one a little bit, as well as detuning oscillator two a little bit. Just giving the sound a little bit more width. So where to next? Well, I think we should check out the distortion. Distortion is just what it says, it adds distortion. Then you have chorus or phaser as well. You can also choose to sync it to tempo. And you have a different parameters here. You can use the level here to increase it. Then you have an EQ that you can use to affect the lows, the mids, and the highs. And this is also a way to shape the sound. For example, if you have a bass that doesn't really sound fat enough, you can just add a bit of bass tonality to it. Lastly, we have voice controls. I think it's good to know that you can change from poly to mono, auto glide, or mono. Mono basically means that you can't play notes at the same time. Which is really handy for bass patches and such. So poly means that you can use all the polyphony at the same time. Now, at this point in time, we need to take a break and have a sip of the coffee. So from here, we can go a number of different routes. We could use the LFOs or the mod matrix and so on. But I think we should talk a little bit about the macro controls and I will show you how to use them and I will try to tie into the LFO as well as the mod matrix. So let's dive into it. So let's start off with macro control number one. All right, so we have a sound here and we want to add a bit of control to the sound using one or two macro knobs. So let's start off with macro knob number one. Let's, for example, say we want chorus to change when we turn it. We just pick chorus level, we pick depth, increase it to maximum, and we can turn it. But let's say we want more things to happen when we turn the knob. Well, we just press this second page here, pick something else. Now let's, for example, go into the mod matrix. So what is a mod matrix? Well, it's basically different sources that interact with the destination and the more depth you turn on, the more of this interaction happens. So it might seem strange, but let's see here. If we just play it and we'll turn a macro number one here, you will hear what happens. Oh, no. Nothing happens because we didn't turn up the depth here. So let's turn it up maximum and let's do it again. So 
So what you heard there was the pitch going all crazy because the destination of the mod matrix number one here is oscillator one and two pitch. If we just choose oscillator one pitch, only oscillator one will be affected. But since I don't want to affect the pitch right now using the Mac knob number one, I'll instead pick something else. For example, I'll pick the filter frequency. As you can hear, when I turn the macro knob, it sends data to the mod matrix here. But the thing is, you could, you could just as easily pick frequency up here. So why pick the mod matrix? Well, because you can get interesting uh, different interactions. So let's, for example, pick a different source rather than just direct. So we're going to have source as DLFO number one. And in the middle of everything, I need to add some effects to the sound as well, some, some reverb, you know. We need to have it sounding a bit fatter and a little bit of a delay here as well. It sounds a lot better. So let's listen to it now. So let's recap. I'm using macro knob number one here to send to the mod matrix depth. In the mod matrix, I have this, a source here, the LFO, it's one source that can manipulate the destination filter frequency. So I could also add another source here, for example, LFO number two. And if we go into LFO number two, we can change the rate here, we can change the, the sync here as well to something like 16 I can listen to it. And now we can listen to it again without turning the macro knob and with some macro knob twisting. So basically the modulation matrix lets you put in different sources that modulates something and create sort of a really wobbly, strange kind of feeling to the sound. And, and, and I mean, this is, this is just a very, very basic rundown of the different parts of the synth editor. You really have to get into it and, and try and experiment and do different things with it. So let's recap. We have the oscillators here. Sending sound to the mixer, where you mix the different signals. The envelope changes the attack and the decay of the sound, as well as of how the filter comes into play. Um, it's sort of an easy, fast way to explain it. Then you have the actual filter. Then you have sort of where you can add effects like distortion chorus and phaser and EQ. You have the voice controls. Then you have the big macro knobs here, which you can use using different uh, uh, different pages here. You can add different things in different interactions uh, that you want to happen when you turn the knob. You have the mod matrix where you also can create different interesting interactions between different sources and destinations. You can just pick, pick and choose and try them out together. Don't be afraid. And then you have the sort of LFO here. The easiest way to learn what an LFO is is really just to use it, try it, try it out, tweak it, don't be afraid, because it's something that often adds a bit of rhythmic or pulsating element to the sound, but just, you know, go there, try it. So lastly, we want to save this patch, because this patch is so goddamn awesome. We go about saving the patch by just pressing save single patch to disk. And we can call this Bow Beats Pad Madness number one. There we go. So this was my little tour of the circuit synth editor with some sound examples as well. And I hope you really enjoyed it. If you did, 
consider liking it, sharing it, um, subscribing to the channel if you want to see more content, leave a comment if you have any suggestions, ideas or questions. And I really hope to see you in the next video. So stay tuned.